even in this very tough environment, you had record revenue at your institutional securities business for the equity and fixed income desks. Can you talk a little bit about what everybody on Wall Street is wondering, that after a first quarter of volatility that we've seen, whether some of these trading gains are sustainable? Well, look, I think that the volatility has, has definitely come in in April. So uh, we don't expect to have that kind of uh, volume continue. But the business is definitely up. Uh, so, you know, my, I don't have a crystal ball any more than anyone else. I'm, I'm uh, pleased that we were able to handle all that volume uh, working remotely. That, that, was, uh, that was something that I felt really good about. Right. You went from eight trading desks to essentially more than 180 trading desks, you told investors this morning. Do you think that that will be more yes. of a permanent change? Uh, well, uh, I hope not. I mean, I think that uh, if that's a permanent change, we're probably talking about, you know, big changes to, to our economy. I, you know, I think that uh, we will uh, be getting back together differently, but I would not suspect that we will be trading from 185 locations. Uh, no. Another and that, that won't be the new normal in my opinion. Another, another area that your business had minted a record this morning was in wealth management. And I'm wondering whether you'll be leaning on that part of the business more moving forward. You know, I, we, we always do. Uh, we, you know, we had records across our firm. I, I said that, you know, the first quarter feels like it was decades ago as I sit here today. But, it, you know, as I look forward for financial services in general, I expect us to be very busy. As we get back and as the economy comes back, there's a lot that needs to be done. Municipal uh, business, they have a lot to do. The clients on rebalancing portfolios, corporations on capital raising, you name it. The financial industry is going to be very busy. Our firm is going to be very busy. Well, speaking of municipals, I'm glad you went there because one of the big uh, comments that has really swept across Wall Street is the idea of municipals, uh, different states going bankrupt. Uh, I'm wondering what your thinking is is, of, is around the big concerns for, for, for state and local governments right now. Well, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a topic that is not only financially uh, interesting, but very politically interesting. So, uh, you know, the concept of, of going bankruptcy uh, is, you know, cities have done it. Uh, states, that's going to be a very uh, big question politically, if nothing else. Uh, I'm going to leave that at this point to the policymakers. When you're looking at the policies that are coming out today in response to the COVID crisis, what are the ones that uh, you're, you're most concerned about in terms of the, the ramifications it's having in the economy? Is there anything that you feel that should be done differently? Well, there's all this discussion. I'm listening to all the news stories, and everyone's talking about the back-end solution. So what is the backstop that the Fed's uh, providing? What about PPP loans? What about Main Street loans? What are all these things we're doing on the back-end? And I think that what we need to be talking about is the front-end, and, and how is the private sector going to be allowed to come up with ways to make people confident to gather again, to go to restaurants, and, uh, and do that, and, and there needs to be more conversation. Let, let me tell you, in St. Louis, what I find is, is I don't want to say ironic, but it's something we should be talking about, and that is the big headline in St. Louis this week was that our third largest health system let go, let go 2,000 health care workers. And when you think about what we're talking about, we're all sheltering in place so we don't overwhelm our health care system on one hand, yet on the other hand, uh, healthcare systems, not just in St. Louis, I, I'm willing to bet that across the nation, our healthcare systems are going bankrupt because people aren't going to the hospital. Let's talk about that as to what, what is it that we're doing. So let's talk about that for a second because if this is one of the biggest areas that you're seeing as problematic and you have you know more than 8,000 employees, different clients across your wealth business, how is this going to impact uh, not just your client base, but kind of the larger economic uh, environment that we're seeing. Well, I think that I think that we have to get more data. I certainly believe that everything we've done to so-called flatten the curve has been very important to do. But we're at a point 
at least at least in St. Louis and across many places across the country, we're at a place where we flatten the curve so much that w there's no business in our hospitals. And so uh, my question is, is, what are we going to do to allow people to get back together? The economic recovery is not going to happen because we allow restaurants to open with 25 percent occupancy. Uh, you know, I'm a finance guy. I'm pretty sure that there isn't a restaurant around that's going to make money at 25 percent occupancy. So how are we going to allow people to be comfortable to gather again? It's going to come from testing and it's going to also come from understanding mm -hmm. right. the true numbers of this coronavirus.